Hey, it's Anfa and this is a little hardware update. As you might know, I've been using a pair of headphones that had a pretty difficult life. These are AKG K518LE and uh, they just got all the good stuff peeled off of them already. They 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 had a tough life. I I had to resolder the headphone jack twice on them. This is not the original connector. Uh. Ah, oh, shit. Why is soldering a fucking headphone jack such a pain in the- uh, They also got, somehow, I got cable damage once and I put a band-aid on that. But they also got cable damage twice. I, I didn't put a band-aid on this yet. Anyway, they, they've been serving me well. Actually, they were my wife's. Uh, she bought them for our uh, rock band rehearsals when we played in a in a rock band. I was the singer and the key keyboard player, and she was the bass player and backing vocals uh, vocalist too. And she bought these to protect her hearing during the rehearsals because she doesn't like stoppers. I was wearing stoppers all the time, and they are totally not like studio monitors. They were they are just you know consumer headphones. And I thought it's finally time to get an upgrade. Because also since I'm like I'm actually doing music production and sound design professionally, as in I do that for a living right now, which is an amazing blessing, and I would never have dreamed of being able to do that. But that's the reality right now. I'm doing this as my full-time job, basically, and I'm doing that on Linux using open-source software, which is just amazing. And thanks to your generous support, I was able to justify a purchase of some decent. Studio monitor headphones. The Audio Technica M50X, and this is the Bluetooth version. I was really torn between these and the standard wired only ones because, uh, well, the Bluetooth ones are a bit ex more expensive, and also I thought. The only reason I would want Bluetooth in them is to enjoy them on my phone, but I'm buying them mostly for working in the studio, and that's the 80% of the time I'm gonna spend in them. But if I can have them wirelessly available for me so I can just listen to them and like accustom myself to the sound of these headphones while on the go, that would be excellent because I could learn this, them as studio monitors much quicker and and thanks to that, like, be much more accurate with my mixing decisions. Mixing and sound design decisions. But I wasn't sure if that's gonna work, so I asked online, and turns out people are using them exactly in this way. They use them all day for production, and then they listen to them on the go, and they accustom themselves to the sound. Because people said that they sound really exactly the same on wireless mode, and they are using aptX, which is a proprietary Qualcomm technology. I would really like to be able to use that technology on Linux, yeah, but I guess we don't. We're, we're not going to get that support because we, someone would probably have to, you know, make a deal with Qualcomm and pay royalties for for allowing that. I, I, that's, I think, that's how it would work. I've heard of Bluetooth transmitters really can do anything, and I wonder why aren't they using the Opus codec, which is free and open source. It supports extremely low latencies. It's very high quality. The sound quality compared to the bitrate is amazing. Like, it's like the most efficient uh, lossy codec out there, and it's super flexible. And I thought that maybe Opus is not optimized for low power usage. But this is very interesting, and I'm gonna try them with uh, my laptop running Manjaro and see how it works with the Bluetooth. How's the latency? How's the quality? Like, I can tell that when you switch on the Bluetooth, they produce a teeny tiny little sound. Like there's a little cog machine working inside receiving the signal. It's very funny. Like it's not at all distracting when you play any music, but when you play nothing and you just put them on and enable the, the Bluetooth module, which is uh, you can, like there's a switch, physical switch, you can just turn it on. And now they should like, you know, maybe they work when you disconnect the cable. I would. Oh yeah, that now the, the the LED went on. You can hear that they were turned on. So I've been very curious if I can use non-proprietary cables because you know I hate vendor lock-in, and uh, these have like their own cable. This is the the headphone jack that comes with the with the headphones and this plugs in. 
and it's good but I was thinking like it's a bit different because it has this little recess here and I was thinking if I'm gonna be able to fit anything else there and I got this one and you can see Damn it. and you see it also has a recess but I wasn't sure if it's gonna fit there so I was very like curious and it does and they work so I'm not locked into some proprietary Audio-Technica cables, which is good, because that would be silly, wasn't it? Okay, so after actually listening for a while, I my first impressions were that the bass is very boomy and muddy, which is, like, completely contrary to what I've heard about these on the internet. Like, I've heard the bass is maybe a bit boosted, but it, I also heard that it's clear and punchy. And uh, I'm not sure if that is me being not adjusted to them. However, after like the whole day of working in them and listening, I think I'm slowly adjusting and uh, starting to like, really hear things more flat. But mm. well, that's a bit strange. I think I'm getting used to these. They don't sound as natural to me today as they sounded yesterday, so I think I'm gonna get used and like tune myself to them. So I've been using these for an entire week for music production sound effects and I think I got used to their sound and they right now I think that they are a little bit bass boosted maybe but it's not as muddy and uh, boomy as I first thought at least that's my perception right now and they are slightly um, treble boosted I hear a lot of more sibilance and or other annoying high frequencies around you know 15k, 14, 12k, uh, very high like very high frequencies. These are definitely emphasized, but I think that's for production. It's good because it helps me identify possible problems in that regard. I don't know. I, I like them. I I was first thinking about maybe returning them because uh, that bass sounded super unreadable and weird. On the other hand, maybe maybe it motivates me to pursue a very, very clean mix. I don't know, I'm still a bit confused, but I think I'm getting used to them and I think I'm gonna like them and I'm gonna use them for my work. All right, it's been a week of me using these things uh, daily for work and for not work as well. And I think I've got used to their sound and I'm not put off by it anymore. So my first impressions as I remember were that the bass is very muddy and overpowered. I don't feel that way anymore. I, after like two days, I thought that the highs are really boosted. I don't feel they are as boosted now. I think I accustomed to the sound and I actually had these um, moments where I was listening to my own music and uh, I realize I'm noticing some slight details I I have missed previously, like you know a little bit of reverb and oh, on the sounds that I just didn't perceive before, and um, that was kind of a revelation I had expected out of these, just to get you know cleaner sound and hence perceive more detail in whatever I'm listening to. There wasn't too much of that happening just yet in this first week. Like I had just one situation where I really had like, wow, I'm hearing more detail. But uh, from, wow, these sound really weird to, I just like these headphones. Uh, yeah, that, that was the journey. And I, I really like uh, how they work and the Bluetooth is reliable and they work for a long time. And I was able to use it with my phone and with my Manjaro laptop. And uh, you can turn them up pretty loud on the Bluetooth receiver. Much louder than something like, say, Redmi AirDots. Like, I've been using these for Bluetooth headphones for a, big, for a longer while. And I can't turn them up as much as these. And, you know, these are quite much more heavy. Like, these are, like, these are 45 millimeter drivers. And these are tiny earplugs. So this is good that you can turn them up because that means I can listen to more dynamic music and enjoy the dynamics without blasting my ass off with the loudness. So that's really good. I really don't have any complaints about them just yet. Um, I like the 
the build quality, I like the look, I like the aesthetics, I like how they fold in different ways, you can, you know, put them together. You get this little pouch with them, as well as this little cable. The cable uh, is ended with, a, with an angled plug and started with a straight one, with this little, you know, it's a bit narrower here, so not every cable will fit in here, but you can get third-party cables at will. And it also has a microphone and, you know, volume controls or, you know, your call control, whatever that is. I haven't used that because my headphone jack in the phone is broken and I need a rubber band to hold it together in order for it to be any usable. So I'm not using the headphone jack at all. So I haven't tested the microphone on this thing. What I do like is that they don't have any microphone built into them, which would be unnecessary. Actually, I just found out they do have one. I would not want that in, in studio headphones, because why? I like that the microphone is on the cable and it's a completely separate thing. I don't really find this, this thing diddling from my ear a problem at all. Like, when I, they're just plugged in, I, I'm using them, I just forget they're there. <laughs> I just get the sound I need in my ears and I don't really feel any problem with this thing hanging off of them. Uh, there's one downside, you only get one cable, only this cable with them. It's not like you get a second one, no. Nope. You get the cable and the pouch and that's all the accessories you get with these headphones. But it feels like it's an alternative design. I haven't tried the previous ones, but from looking at many reviews, it seems like they have been adding different small features and improving them. Uh, and this is like the top of the line of this this uh, branch of design. Like the M60s are a completely different design, same with M70s. Do they sound exactly like the cabled ones? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure they don't because they had to fit batteries, uh, a Bluetooth receiver and amplifier in them and you just don't have the same acoustic properties if you change the dimensions of a, of a resonator and that's what enclosure of the headphones is. It's a resonator, so they can't sound the same, but I think they're a, a pretty good tool for music production and for enjoying music as well. And I think that the aspect that you can listen to them on the go through Bluetooth and then use them as wired studio monitor headphones, it actually works because I, I don't really notice any differences in the sound characteristics when I swap between you know, them being powered by this interface, this audio interface, and then being powered by their built-in amplifier and Bluetooth receiver. And they use the aptX codec. I guess they sound as good as, as Bluetooth can sound. So I guess that's my thoughts on uh, adopting and using the Audio-Technica M50XBT for a week. And uh, I like them a lot. I hope this video was useful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.